Hello, I'm Yolanda Barnes, Director of Savills World Research. Today, I'm going to be talking about our latest World Cities review. In this edition, we take an in-depth look at real estate costs for business sectors across our 10 world-class cities. Often, we see the headline dollars per square foot or euros per square metre figures for office space, which are quoted as the business cost of locating in a particular city. We think that this is only a small part of the whole real estate story though. Why? Well, there are three reasons. First, because the amount of office space occupied by the same company in different cities will vary. There are different norms and expectations in different countries and between different industries. Second, rent isn't the whole story. Leaving aside the companies who might want to own their own buildings rather than lease them, there are hidden costs like rates, taxes and levies that can add to the rent burden in some jurisdictions. Finally, residential property can impose a far greater real estate cost burden than commercial property. For example, some expat CEOs and directors have their rents paid by the company. Apart from that direct cost though, residential accommodation has become more important in a more indirect way. Wage expectations and local standards will be driven by the standard of living expected and its cost. A major component of this, if not the major component, will be the quality and cost of housing. Our research shows that across all our world cities, 75% of real estate costs will be residential rather than commercial. It has long been said in the property industry, and not without some foundation, that relocation decisions are made on the basis of where the CEO would like to live rather than where the finance director derives maximum efficiencies. So we've taken a slightly different approach to this and we've looked at seven people who might be employed in a financial company and a creative company. And we've looked at the seven households associated with those employees and measured what it costs them to be accommodated in residential property as well as in office property. We have also included the hidden real estate costs like local rates and taxes for both types of property. Now when all of these things are combined, the cost rankings can differ somewhat from the headline office rents. Hong Kong, as is usual these days, tops the league as the most expensive city for real estate, but London drops to second place. One of the big surprises in the total cost rankings is Paris, which although it has the second cheapest headline office rents, is the fourth most expensive for total costs. And New York is a special story at the moment, especially from a residential point of view. So we have chosen it, along with the intriguingly different Tokyo market, for one of two special spotlights in this edition. New York has fallen from its position of previous years as one of the most valuable cities in the world, to the fourth cheapest in our list of 10. Meanwhile, continued rental growth has pushed yields in New York to over 6%, a level unequaled by other world cities. As usual, this video can only cover the highlights and you can find out much more by reading the report. You can find out, for example, how a new metro line has boosted values in a Mumbai suburb by as much as 70% in one year and how cooling measures and changing tax regimes are affecting some city markets. All this is set against a background of rising wealth in the East and the increasing dominance of private money over institutional and corporate wealth. And this continues to change the hierarchy of our world city values. We hope you enjoy this Insights edition and the subsequent special papers that we'll be releasing through the year. For more information and to download the full report, please visit www.savills.com forward slash world cities. Thank you.